Hey, so I'm Gary, this is me, Mr. Hanson, back with the next video in topic seven about probability. We're in section 7.2 now that states understanding theoretical probability. Our central question is how can the probability of an event help us make predictions? So now we're looking at theoretical probability. What that is, is that it's in theory what should happen. So for example, if I flipped a coin, it should land on heads once and tails once because they're equally likely to land on each side because they're two sides. Same with rolling a die. If I roll a die, each number of one through six is a one in six chance of happening. So if I roll it six times, theoretically, I should get a different number each of those six rolls. That's again, in theory. That doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but that's what theoretical probability is, is what should in theory happen if it was always that way. So. Anything you see in red, by the way, is stuff that you gotta write down on your notes. So if it's highlighted red, you write it down. If I write it in red, you write it down as well. That's how this works. So here we go. So <clears throat> theoretical probability is the probability of an event. So when you see this, P stands for probability. In parentheses is what they want, okay? So if I put P in parentheses two and it has a number Q, that means what's the probability of rolling a two, right? So whatever the event is, I read as a fraction with the number of favorable outcomes, how many I want, over the total number of possible outcomes possible. So again, if I were to say what's the probability of P being two on a die, that means that the probability of a two landing is one side, because one side is two, out of the total sides, which are six. Now, <clears throat> this is based on calculated results from the knowledge of the possible outcomes. Again, in theory, what should happen. Now, it's also important to understand what an event is. An event is a single outcome or a group of outcomes. It can be a single outcome or it can be grouped. So if I again say, what's the probability of rolling an even number on a die? Well, two, four, and six are even, so it would be three out of six sides as my fraction. So let's get to our examples here. We've got a lot of examples to get through. So with example one, says, Samira is playing a game with a spinner shown with all these letters. Question A says, what's the theoretical probability that the pointer will land in a section labeled with the letter A on a given spin? So I'm looking at all the total sections. So I need to know how many sections I have. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10 sections. That's important to know that there are 10 sections to the spinner, which is my total. So that's gonna be my denominator for my fraction. Now, how many are labeled A? Well, I have one here and one here. That's two out of 10, which I can simplify to one fifth. Now I can also write it as a percentage, which means on my calculator, I just do top divided by bottom. I get a decimal value, whatever is behind a decimal point, that's my percentage. One divided by five would be 20%. All right, so question B now says, Predict how many times the pointer will land in a section labeled with the letter A after now 300 spins. So to make predictions with probability, I take the theoretical probability and I set it in a proportion to find what's missing. So here's essentially what it's gonna look like. I have one fifth for A, and that's gonna be equal to X number of times it lands on A out of 300, right? So the total always goes on the bottom. So again, here's my proportion. Remember, we can cross, multiply, and divide, or I can look at the relationship going across with five and 300. So if I cross multiply, that's 300 times one, which is 300, divide by five to get my answer. Or I could notice that, hey, five goes into 30 six times, add a zero, that would be 60. So I take one and multiply it by 60, and I would say that it would land on A 60 times. Again, that's a prediction. If I were to actually spin this spinner 300 times, it could land on A half the times, which is 150. We don't know, right? Example two. The spinner below is divided into eight equal parts. Find the theoretical probability described below as a fraction. So now, here's the example. The probability of a number greater than two so two and above. So I'm going to look here and I'm going to put a little tick mark by all the ones that are greater than two. Well, it looks like every single number except for 
one, right? Excuse me, it says greater than two, so it does not include two. My fault. So greater than two, so that would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six out of the eight sections, which I can simplify to three fourths, which is, of course, 75%. Right? So if it's greater than two, that means it does not include two. If it had said two or higher, then we'd include two. All right, example three. <coughs> says the same number of 7th and 8th graders attend Morgan School. A student is randomly chosen to raise the flag each day. About how many times is it expected that a 7th grader will raise the flag during the next 30 days of school? Well, if it says that it's chosen randomly, right, and it says the same number of 7th and 8th graders, so we could say 500 7th graders, 500 8th graders. It's the same number for both grades. So how many times would it be expected that a seventh grader would raise it? We would say half the time, right? So if it's chosen at random, and there's half seventh graders, half eighth graders, for the next 30 days, it would be one half, right? Or 50%. Again, that's a prediction. We don't know for sure. One, one seventh grader could be picked in the next 30 days. The rest could be eighth graders, or it could be the opposite. All 30 could be seventh graders. We don't know. Example four. It says Raquel Richard, uh, Hannah, I think that's how it's pronounced, and Lenny equally split the price of one season ticket so they can take turns attending the baseball games. If a season ticket includes 68 games, how many games should Raquel expect to attend this season? So there's four of them, all right? So one out of every four times Raquel gets to go because Raquel is one out of the four friends. And if there's 68 games, 68 would go on the bottom. Read my proportion again. I can use that to solve this. So I can cross multiply here. 68 times one. And then I can divide it by four to find my answer. If I take 68 and divide it by four, I get 17. So Rick Kell can expect to go to 17 games. All right, so what I'm gonna have you guys do is I'm gonna have you guys try examples five and six on your own, and we're gonna go over them in class the next day. But we're gonna continue on and go back to the back side of our notes and start with example seven. So example seven says a 12-sided solid has faces numbered one through 12. Essentially, it's a 12-sided die. Part A says find the probability of rolling a number greater than five. So that would include six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12. That's again, seven out of the 12. And if you can simplify your fractions, always make sure you simplify. Part B <clears throat> says that the 12 sided solid is rolled 180 times. How many times do you expect either a three, nine or 11 to be rolled? So three, nine, 11 is three out of the 12 sides, which I can simplify by dividing by three to one fourth. So one fourth of the time it'll land on three, nine or 11. Now I take that and I set it up in my proportion here with 108 on the bottom to figure out how many times it would indeed happen. Cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to take 180 times 1, which is 180, divide it by 4, and that gives me 45 times. Again, these are all predictions. That's not legit what's going to happen. It's just a prediction. Okay. All right, example eight says Camille rolls two number cubes together and records their sums. If she does this 108 times, how many times should she expect the sum to be seven? Well, I need to look at all the ones that could possibly be seven. There's one, two, three, four, five, six different combinations where I could have a sum of seven. I could roll a six and a one, I could roll a five and a two, a four and a three, a three and a four, a two and a five, or a one and a six, right? If I have a blue number cube and a orange number cube. So there are a total of six. And if I look at this, there's six and six, which is 36 total different combinations. Now it says I'm gonna do this 180 times. So I can set that equal to 180, all right? Cross, multiply, and divide. So I'm going to take 180, multiply it by 6, and then 
divided by 36. 180 multiplied by 6, divide that by 36. That gives me 30 times as a prediction. All right? Now, how do I find the total number of um, different uh, combinations I can come up with? Is if you look here, there are 6 here, 6 there. 6 times 6 is 36. There's total 36 different sums that I can come up with. All right, again, I'm going to have you guys try out questions 9 and 10 on your own in your notes, and we'll go over them together. We're going to do example number 11 as our last one for this video. The spinner at the right show um, is divided into eight equal sections, labeled 1 through 8. Part A, find the theoretical probability described below. Write your answer as a simplified fraction. So a number less than 6. A number less than 6. That would include 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. That's five out of the eight sections. Part B, well, how many times would you expect the pointer to land on a number less than six if the pointer is spun 30 times? So we set it up as five eighths equal to a proportion of x over 30. And now I can cross multiply 30 by five and divide that total by eight. So that would give me approximately 18.75. So if I rounded it up, I would say 19 times. All right? Now, I'm explaining this by just stating that I could set up a proportion, cross multiply and divide to find precisely how many times that this would occur. All right, that's it for this video. We'll see you next time we start talking about experimental probability.